time it is from the NNPP, uh, the New Nigerian People's Party, as they are also calling for caution and insist on peaceful, uh, peaceful protests. Uh, we're being joined via Zoom uh, by Ladipa Johnson, who is the Publicity Secretary of uh, the New Nigerian People's uh, Party. So good to have you on the show. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, thanks for joining us this morning on the, on the show. We, we are still looking at a plant protest. Uh, by all indications, uh, uh, one can say uh, that indeed uh, the plant protest would go as planned. Well, um, it is not surprising. We realize as a party that um, the economy is very harsh at the moment. People in Nigeria feel they are suffering and most say they feel they're suffering they're suffering uh, um, things are harsh things are difficult and so um, somehow the people of the country or oh, a lot of them feel that um, their voices should be heard um, so we're not surprised if it goes on we won't be surprised but we have urged um, caution because um, we see these protests. Um, in the past, we've seen how they have been hijacked by hoodlums, by people sent, maybe by, by politicians, just to get um, the thing becoming violent, let it become violent and everything. So we, we urge some form of caution. We hope the police and security agents will do their work, not in stopping the protesters from peaceful protests, but in ensuring that they're not hijacked, they're not attacked by um, hoodlums, as we saw during the NSARS. What can you make of um, the current narrative that's been pushed by uh, the Nigerian police um, confining uh, the protests, uh, the protesters to uh, particular spots. Um, does this uh, uh, does this sound like the appropriate uh, uh, move uh, to further monitor and control uh, possible uh, uh, um, unrest or violence? Well, um, unfortunately, you and I do not have the security reports that they do. Uh, we do not know what um they have seen or what they see coming but um i would say that um if the protesters choose or the intention is to march from one place to the other not necessarily blocking the road or staying in one place and causing um maximum inconvenience or escalating to damages in an area um, then i think the police should attempt to um, just go with them and make sure that um, the boundaries are set as they move from from area to area um, that is usually the best way however if you put them in one place they begin and then unfortunately if you put them in one place and they get attacked by hoodlums coming in uh, because we've seen you see well, there's no need to mince words here we've seen people going around in lagos and different places warning people threatening them that if they participate so and so will happen so if that happens then it, it it will be that the police might have been complicit in actually putting the people in one place and letting them, them get attacked you know but we're at, we we were in sensitive times and the inspector general must um, apply wisdom um i wish him well he must apply wisdom and ensure as much as possible that um the there is no violence that peaceful protesters are not attacked and that um, urchins or hired hands do not hijack the protests and begin to um, steal and rob people and um, shops, etc. The, these are difficult things, yeah, to balance. 
Yeah, let's 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 look at um, attempts by uh, this uh, this uh, this government and what we've seen them do in the shortest possible time. Uh, do, do you really think uh, uh, if this were done earlier, it probably could have um, changed the narrative? Well, like like what what of which of the steps, sir? What, which ones are we've you? Seen, we've seen letters move. We've just heard they, about they, um, uh, removal of import duties on essential foods. We've seen Dangote being able to get um, crude for the next six months, which obviously will show up the, the value of the Naira and a few other attempts by, by this government. Do you think uh, probably this would have changed the narrative if all of this were, 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 were put in place early enough? Because it is basically a hunger protest. Unfortunately, my brother. Unfortunately, government has not shown seriousness. I make bold to say we shouldn't be at this stage right now. They haven't. There are many things they should have looked at, some things they should have reversed, some things maybe they should have put in place even before now. And I think it, they've had this like a desical attitude that, um, well, it is what it is that is, we we have a problem you have to take a painful um, or you have to take painful and bitter medication so if you want to take it take it if you don't want to take it don't take it that has been the attitude of government now this attitude might be okay in a situation where the people see that government itself has taken steps to cut costs etc etc but we haven't seen that they haven't seen that they see what they see or hear whether right or wrong is that this is being bought this is being done this is being done you understand and the people feel hang on a minute we are meant to be tightening our belts some people are cutting away 29 million on a, a month or so so they say why are we the ones suffering for it and so when you get to that stage, then you begin to get people who do not respond to the programs of government. You begin to get that sort of situation where there's a disconnect between government and the governed. And once you're at that point, it becomes dangerous. Then government begins to say, oh, uh, don't, don't protest. Some people want to hijack you. There are foreign people involved. There are these involved. It's all bulldash. You have to manage these things. And government has failed to manage it from the day one. When Mr. President was saying, girl, subsidy is gone. Subsidy wasn't budgeted for by the Buhari administration for um, uh, um, uh, past June or July. And we all know it. But there are ways you introduce these things. Same thing with the way they spoke, uh, or the way he spoke regarding what happened in Niger, etc. And what has happened in Equus has happened in Equus. So these things, are, when people overseas say you have to be presidential, you have to be presidential. It doesn't mean you have to wear fine abada alone. It, it means that there are statements that cannot come out of your mouth or that of your ministers the people will react the people will panic and that is part of what we've been suffering so i think this has even achieved the the so-called protest even before beginning has achieved a lot in the sense that they know that the people have been are being pushed or are nearly have nearly been pushed to the wall and that the Nigerians will not take it. They will talk or they will march. So once government knows that, then I, be, I believe that we now begin to get to the serious business of governance with three years to go. Okay. The first year was just yeah. Yeah. joke or whatever. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. A few callers we had today on the show uh, did say that if government really wants to uh, fight hunger and uh, 
help Nigerians fight hunger, they should revisit that statement you just mentioned, where subsidy is gone. They should, they should be able to uh, maybe return, return some level for form of for subsidy that would in turn bring down the cost of uh, PMS, petroleum products in Nigeria. Uh, what exactly is your party's position on this? Yes, I remember during the elections. In fact, yesterday we discussed it, myself and Senator Konkozo. During the elections, we had the program on one of your rival stations or sister TV stations. And um, some of the spokespersons were there. And um, that of the PDP, that of the APC were saying that we will end subsidy on day one. You understand? And I said, well, we want to end subsidy, but not on day one. We have to look at it properly and ensure that um, the, the, the something has been put in place or things have been put in place to ease the people into that regime. Uh, this um, wasn't done. And one question that Nigerians keep asking me when we discuss a few people have is that okay if you know that fuel subsidy is like a scam why don't you remove the scam out of the subsidy what is wrong with us that we cannot tackle fuel theft crude oil theft and we cannot tackle the false claim for subsidies this is an administrative thing. Why can't we do that? In every country, most countries in the world, if agri isn't being subsidized, health is being subsidized, elect, um, electricity or power is being subsidized, and fuel might be subsidized in some places. So when the IMF comes to you and say, no, you shouldn't subsidize, you shouldn't do this, you should be free market, it's all story. Take what pays you out of what the IMF is telling you. You don't do everything they say. Take what pays you. What pays your people? What pays your economy? And you try to grow your economy uh, in a gradual manner. So I, I, I don't really understand. I understand what people are saying that um, the subsidy, they're, they're still paying subsidies. When we say the subsidies should be returned. And then we're forgetting one little thing. The value of the Naira has crashed. So it makes everything more difficult, more expensive, etc. For context, our friends in Benin Republic, in Togo, their currency is stronger than the Naira. All within less than, less than a year. If you want to... Um, talk about what this administration has done yes a year is not enough but if he were a premier league football manager they would even let him last the whole of the season because they don't we don't expect the naira to tank in that way though we are going through some sort of reforms 